261 birthday gift. Yu Bing didn't care about the method as long as there were no rats. That's good. Actually, I'm also worried that the cat would be naughty and tear the packaging of the food. At that time, we'll have more trouble. Since the rat poison is useful, buy more of it. Jiang Chun nodded with an awkward expression. However, Yu Bing was unpacking the gift she had brought back this time and didn't notice. These gifts had been bought when she brought the two little fellows shopping two afternoons ago. Yu Bing took out a dress from the bottom of the bag and looked at Jiang Chun expectantly as she said, Chun Chun, I bought you a dress. The upper body of the dress was a beige medium-sleeved flounced shirt. The lower body was a rusty red A-line umbrella dress that reached her calves. It looked elegant and youthful. Jiang Chun's face was a little chubby, but she wasn't fat. This outfit could make her look more mature. The first thing Jiang Chun saw was the price. She didn't even have to touch the material. Just by looking at it, she knew that it wasn't cheap. Why did you spend so much money? I don't want it. Keep it for yourself. After Yu Bing folded the dress and placed it on Jiang Chun's bed, she said with a smile, I can't wear the dress. I'm 166 centimeters tall now. I bought the dress for you. If you don't wear the dress, I'll give the dress away. Besides, have you forgotten what day it is today? This dress cost at least 20 to 30 yuan. How could Jiang Chun bear to give the dress away? As she looked at Yu Bing's smug smile, she felt very helpless. Ever since Yu Bing arrived in the countryside, she had grown from 155 centimeters to 166 centimeters, but after she grew to 160 centimeters, she had stopped growing. Jiang Chun thought about how it really didn't fit Yu Bing, so she didn't refuse anymore. This was the first new dress Jiang Chun had ever owned. Most of her clothes were old clothes that her neighbor's sister or her relatives didn't want. After Jiang Chun carefully put the dress into the cabinet, she thought about making a dress for Yu Bing on her birthday next month. Hearing Yu Bing's question, Jiang Chun thought about it seriously. In the end, she only remembered that she had to prepare all the goods from City H's supply and marketing club before she got off work today, since she didn't want to delay the delivery tomorrow morning. She asked Yu Bing, what day is it today? Yu Bing shook her head helplessly. Your birthday. Jiang Chun slapped her forehead gently. I forgot. But there's nothing to celebrate. Turning 19 isn't that special. Yu Bing placed all the gifts and specialties on the table and started to distribute them. We're rich now, so we can't mistreat ourselves on our birthdays. Last year, we just arrived and were poor, so we could only eat an egg to celebrate our birthdays. We can't be so sloppy this year. I'll bake you a cake. Let's have a good celebration today. When Jiang Chun heard this, she placed her head on Yu Bing's shoulder and asked with emotion, Yu Bing, why are you so good to me? Yu Bing's hand that was holding the gifts paused as she secretly thought to herself, of course, it's because you treat me better. Everyone felt that Yu Bing was impressive and that Jiang Chun had always been basking in Yu Bing's glory. Only Yu Bing knew that in her past life and this life, Jiang Chun's kindness towards her had never changed. It was like a drizzle in spring. This kind of concern and care had always been silent, so it was easy to overlook. Yu Bing smiled and said, when I'm busy, you do all the work at home. The two of us don't have to be so formal. When Jiang Chun heard the last half of the sentence, she felt that it made sense. She decided that she had to do more work and take good care of the house so that Yu Bing could focus on doing big things. With Jiang Chun's help, after spending an entire afternoon, Yu Bing finally finished dividing the things. Xiaoli and Shaolin's toys were given to them after dinner. The remaining frog toy, three lipsticks, two bottles of wine, and a few boxes of snacks of different flavors were gifts for the Song family. She also prepared the same amount for Wang Yun's family. Because the Wang family's father and son didn't drink, Yu Bing bought two famous hero brand fountain pens from S-City. The remaining snacks were for leaders and old colleagues from the planning bureau, as well as village chief Mr. Wu, Auntie Zhao, and the others who were on good terms with her. At night, Yu Bing baked a cake and cooked some dishes. Jiang Chun had had the most extravagant birthday of her life, so she invited Yu Bing to watch a movie together on her day off. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 262 Stocking On her day off, Yu Bing insisted that Jiang Chun change into new clothes before they went out. She felt a sense of accomplishment when she saw how beautiful Jiang Chun looked in the clothes she had chosen. The two of them took the opportunity to send the gifts along the way, so they only watched the movie at around noon. At this moment, Yu Yin saw an acquaintance from Yi Mountain Village. Actually, she had only seen him once before. Yu Yin was prepared to take an ox cart to town to get the package from home, but she didn't expect to encounter Chui Jin. After she saw Chui Jin from afar, she looked around nervously. Because it was their day off, everyone had entered the city to buy things. There were not many people walking around outside the village. 
There were just children chasing each other and playing around. Yu Yin walked towards Choi Jin quickly. When she was a few steps away from Choi Jin, she stopped and glared at him as she said angrily, Follow me. Choi Jin didn't expect Yu Shi's sister to be an intellectual in a mountain village. Before he could say anything, Yu Yin turned around. He wanted to leave directly, but thinking of his relationship with Yu Shi, he endured his anger and followed her. After the two of them walked to a corner concealed by a tree, Yu Yin crossed her arms in front of her chest and asked with a frown, Choi Jin, is there a point in following me like this? Although Choi Jin had a poker face, when he heard Yu Yin's words, he couldn't help but reveal an exasperated expression. He knew Yu Yin because he had gone to Lin Chue City with Yu Shi to participate in the military school's advanced studies last year. In the army, Yu Shi and Choi Jin had a very good relationship. Therefore, when he arrived at Yu Shi's hometown, Yu Shi insisted on bringing Choi Jin home for dinner and matchmake Yu Yin and Choi Jin. Previously, Yu Hai and Li Xian had read Yu Shi's letter, which mentioned Choi Jin's family situation. Although he was from the countryside, his family structure was very simple. He also had siblings and his parents were both cultured people with decent jobs. Choi Jin's grandmother lived with Choi Jin's uncle, who was in retirement from the army. Choi Jin had become a battalion commander at a young age and had a bright future. Although Choi Jin's siblings were a little young, his family wouldn't cause any financial burden for the young couple. There wouldn't be any financial problems if Yu Yin chose such a family. Choi Jin's family was cultured, so there wouldn't be communication issues. However, the other party was from the countryside. With Yu Yin's family's financial situation, if Yu Yin married over, she would be marrying down. Li Xian knew Yu Yin's temper too well. She wasn't someone who could withstand suffering, so if she found someone with slightly worse financial conditions, the other party's parents would be more tolerant of her. Moreover, after they found a job in the city for Yu Yin, the other party's parents definitely wouldn't stop her. This way, when their son-in-law returned to the army, Yu Yin could return to her maiden home and they could take care of her. Therefore, the Yu family was very satisfied with Chui Jin. When they ate together that day, they saw that Yu Yan's attitude towards Chui Jin wasn't bad. She even looked bashful when she looked at Chui Jin, so the couple thought that this matter would go smoothly. Therefore, after Yu Shi and Chui Jin returned to school, Li Xian couldn't wait to tell Yu Yin about Chui Jin's family situation. Unexpectedly, after she told Yu Yin that Chui Jin's family was from the countryside and that he had a six-year-old sister, Yu Yin became enraged and blamed him for trying to ruin her life. Li Xian was so angry that she almost had a heart attack. A few days later, since Yu Hai and Li Xian didn't want to miss out on this good son-in-law, they mentioned Chui Jin to Yu Yan again. This time, as soon as they mentioned his name, Yu Yan immediately covered her ears and said that she never wanted to hear this name again. Otherwise, she would go on a hunger strike. Marriage was a joyous occasion, but since Yu Yan was so resistant and Li Xian didn't want her daughter to be unhappy, she could only give up on this idea. Chui Jin was also very embarrassed during the meal that day. At that time, his parents and superiors had been urging him to get married. He didn't have a sweetheart, so he went to the Yu family's house with the intention of taking a look. Yu Yin was quite good looking, but Chui Jin really didn't feel anything for her. After returning to school, he was even thinking about how to reject the matter if Yu Shi mentioned this again. However, this matter was left unsettled. Chui Jin knew that Yu Yin probably didn't fancy him, so he heaved a sigh of relief. When Choi Jin saw that Yu Yin had mistaken him for a stalker, he thought about it and felt that he should explain himself so as not to scare the young lady. When Yu Yin saw that Choi Jin was about to say something, she immediately made a stop sign and continued loudly with an impatient expression, I don't want to hear your confession. I won't change my decision. For my brother's sake, I won't fuss over your harassment this time. If there's a next time, I'll report you to the army. I'll even. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 263 Sending Rat Poison As soon as she saw Chui Jin, Yu Yin accused him of all sorts of things without giving him a chance to explain. On account of Yu Shi, he didn't want to argue with Yu Yin, but when he heard that Yu Yin was going to write a letter to report him to the army, his expression instantly turned cold. Even though Chui Jin didn't speak, Yu Yin was so frightened by his expression that she didn't dare to continue. In contrast to the agitated Yu Yin, Chui Jin only looked at Yu Yin coldly and said in a low voice, You want to report me even though you don't know about the situation. Have you ever thought of the consequences of your indiscriminate slander? Yu Yin was intimidated by Chui Jin and only retorted softly, When did I slander you? You're being unreasonable by stalking me. Chui Jin was so angry that he laughed. Are you the only one in the village? Chui Jin suddenly remembered that his crush was also in this village. Yu Yin had misunderstood him, so if his crush heard about it and thought that he wanted to two-time, things would be over for him. His goal for this visit was very clear. He couldn't let Yu Yin mess it up. 
At the thought of this, he couldn't care less about the fact that Yu Yin was his good friend's sister. He returned to his usual manner of speaking and said with a cold expression, Go back and take a look in the mirror when you're free. You're not that beautiful, so how can you be so confident? Also, I'll be staying here for a while recently. Don't associate me with you. It's fine if you don't care, but don't implicate me. As soon as Choi Jin finished speaking, he saw a girl with two braids that reached her chest. He only came back to his senses when he saw that she passed by an intersection and disappeared. When Yu Yin heard Choi Jin's words, she was so angry that she could barely speak. Just as she was about to retort loudly, she saw Choi Jin's gentle gaze as he looked behind her, so she followed his gaze and looked behind her, but she didn't see anything. After Choi Jin retracted his gaze, he looked at Yu Yin again. For your brother's sake, I won't hold you accountable. If you dare to say that I have anything to do with you next time, it won't be you who will write a report. I'll report you for slander. After Choi Jin finished speaking, he ignored Yu Yan's reaction and strode towards the intersection. As Yu Yan watched Choi Jin leave, she raised her hand and pointed at Choi Jin in exasperation, you. Unfortunately, before Yu Yan could finish her sentence, Choi Jin disappeared. Ah. Yu Yan, who was about to go crazy from anger, could only stomp her feet and shout. Yu Yin had never been treated like this before. Ever since she was young, whenever boys saw her, they took good care of her. Therefore, when Chui Jin said that she was slandering him, she couldn't think of a way to refute him. Chui Jin, who had disappeared, was chasing after Jiang Chun. Jiang Chun. Jiang Chun was discussing the movie plot with Yu Bing when she heard someone call her. She turned around and looked at the other party. As Jiang Chun looked at the unfamiliar man in front of her, she felt a sense of familiarity. His well-defined facial features were handsome, he had deep eye sockets, and his jawline was as chiseled as a knife. The man's masculine aura finally made Jiang Chun realize who the other party was. Because she wasn't 100% sure, Jiang Chun looked at him tentatively. Chui Jin? As Chui Jin looked at the pretty girl in a dress, he felt his face heat up. However, because of his training, his skin was quite tanned, which helped Chui Jin conceal his blush. Chui Jin could no longer remember the words he had planned to say. He froze for a moment before he thought of something. I'm here to send you rat poison. Jiang Chun was stunned for a moment. The last time she replied, she didn't mention rat poison. Yu Bing had only asked her to buy more yesterday, so how did Chui Jin find out today? Yu Bing snickered and covered her mouth with her hand quickly. Then, she looked at Jiang Chun teasingly and repeated what Jiang Chun had said last night, I bought a bag of rat poison. It's very useful. Jiang Chun blushed and hit Yu Bing's arm angrily. Yu Bing pursed her lips to hide her smile as she observed the way Chui Jin looked at Jiang Chun. Based on the many romance dramas she watched, she was certain that Chui Jin liked Jiang Chun very much. Seeing the military uniform and the righteousness in the other party's eyes, Yu Bing decided to give the two of them a chance to interact. I'll go back first. You two can talk. Jiang Chun was about to call Yu Bing to wait for her, but Yu Bing walked away quickly. Looking at Chui Jin, Jiang Chun suddenly felt that the atmosphere was a little awkward. She thought of the rat poison he had mentioned, so she continued, Thank you. I was about to write you a letter and ask you to help me buy some more. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 264 Sour Smell Chui Jin had only hung out with boys since he was young. Because he hated how fussy girls were, he knew nothing about how to interact with girls. Looking at the girl he liked, he decided to be direct. Jiang Chun, do you have a boyfriend? Huh? Jiang Chun was stumped by this straightforward question. After Jiang Chun was stunned for a moment, she suddenly realized that Chui Jin had feelings for her, so she replied embarrassedly in a low voice, No. After Chui Jin heaved a sigh of relief, he stared at Jiang Chun's face and asked, Then can I be your boyfriend? Jiang Chun was stunned by Chui Jin's abruptness. But we don't know each other very well. Since Jiang Chun didn't reject him directly, the tense expression on Chui Jin's face eased up. I have 12 days of leave this time. Subtracting the time for the round trip, I have nine days to let you learn more about me. My family is from the countryside. There are a total of five people in my family. I also have a pair of six-year-old twin siblings. I know you're from the city, so I wonder if you mind. Jiang Chun shook her head and said with a blush, I don't mind. I'm quite good at taking care of people, so you can rest assured. Then, she explained her family's situation. She emphasized her father's illness, that she was an only child, and that she needed to support her parents in their old age. Jiang Chun's actions gave Chui Jin a better impression of her. He admired her frankness and open-mindedness. In the future, I'll treat your parents as my own. Their relationship had yet to be confirmed, but they were already talking about their post-marriage life. 
Jiang Chun felt that their conversation was too forward-looking, but at this point, she continued to talk about her plan. Don't worry, I have a job too. I can afford my father's medical expenses. When Chui Jin heard this, he hurriedly said, A son-in-law is like a son, so I should pay for it. My father is the village chief, and my mother is a doctor in the commune. My parents said that since they have a salary and a pension, I should spend all my money on my own family. After we get married, my salary will be yours. There were people who pursued Jiang Chun, but whenever they found out about Jiang Chun's family's situation, they hesitated. Having to take care of a patient who needed medicine for the long term was like throwing money into a bottomless pit. When Jiang Chun heard Chui Jin's words, she was very touched. My family's situation is like this. Other than being a city dweller, my conditions are not as good as yours. If you don't mind, we can date each other. Chui Jin revealed a rare smile. No problem. Jiang Chun thought of his accommodation, so she asked, Where are you staying tonight? Chui Jin replied, I have a letter of recommendation and a military certificate, so I'll explain it to the village chief later. Any place is fine. It was still early, so the two of them chatted as they walked toward the end of the village. Jiang Chun and Yu Bing would take care of Chui Jin's meals. Yu Bing couldn't ask Jiang Chun about the exact situation in front of Chui Jin, but she was very surprised at the speed at which the two of them suddenly confirmed their relationship and when Jiang Chun had met such a soldier. She didn't notice at all. After dinner, Jiang Chun was worried that Chui Jin wouldn't be able to find his way, so she brought him to the village chief's house to settle down. Chui Jin was also worried that it wasn't safe for Jiang Chun to walk alone at night, so he insisted on sending Jiang Chun home. In the end, the two of them continued to chat under the tree at the door. After Yu Bing washed up, she waited for a long time. The moon was already rising, but the two people outside the door still didn't seem to have finished talking. Seeing this scene, she couldn't help but marvel, it's good to be young. How come I feel like the air is filled with the sour smell of love? They didn't part until 9.30. When Yu Bing saw Jiang Chun close the door, she immediately rushed forward and said fiercely, If you confess, I'll forgive you. If you resist, I'll punish you severely. Tell me honestly, how did you guys meet under my nose without me knowing? Jiang Chun pursed her lips and smiled in embarrassment. Then, she tilted her head and said to Yu Bing, Do you still remember the 0.5 yuan on the stove? After Yu Bing came to a realization, she slapped her thigh and said, I knew it. Moreover, you clearly looked a little off that night. I just didn't think too much about it, so you were able to brush it off. TSK, TSK, TSK. Jiang Chun, you hit it quite well. I was deceived by you. Jiang Chun hurriedly explained, I didn't do it on purpose. The mission he was on had to be kept a secret. Moreover, he was in trouble at that time. One more person knowing about it would mean more danger. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 265 Compromise When Yu Bing saw Jiang Chun's serious expression, she smiled and said, I was joking, but aren't you two confirming your relationship too soon? Jiang Chun thought for a moment before saying seriously, I already had a good impression of him before. This time, when he suddenly appeared and I recognized him, I suddenly felt an indescribable sense of joy. Moreover, he didn't despise me after he found out about my family's situation. Yu Bing knew that Jiang Chun had been taken advantage of by Sun Yu in her previous life and was forced into marriage. Without Sun Yu in this life, Yu Bing couldn't guess what Jiang Chun's marriage would be like, nor did she want to interfere too much. She believed that Jiang Chun could make a choice that was suitable for her without external pressure. All Yu Bing could do was strengthen herself, so that if there was a problem with Jiang Chun's marriage one day, she could also be Jiang Chun's powerful backer. Only you know if the shoes fit. I believe you can choose your other half on your own. When the topic shifted to relationships, Jiang Chun couldn't help but ask Yu Bing curiously, Yu Bing, what kind of man are you looking for? Yu Bing was stunned for a moment. When Xiao Xing's face suddenly appeared in her mind, she was so startled that she hurriedly shook her head. Jiang Chun was a little confused by Yu Bing's reaction. Why are you shaking your head? When Yu Bing came back to her senses, she smiled awkwardly and said, I don't plan to get married. Jiang Chun widened her eyes. Why? As Yu Bing sat on the chair, she supported her chin with one hand as she looked ahead and said, I don't want to be hurt. Be it family or love, as long as I don't put in the effort, I won't be hurt. Jiang Chun didn't agree with this point of view. You're a classic example of not even eating because you're afraid of choking on your food. This is too extreme. You just haven't met anyone you like from the bottom of your heart and who reciprocates your feelings. Yu Bing glanced at Jiang Chun and said with a smile, not bad. You've only been in a relationship for slightly more than half a day, but you've already become my relationship mentor. Jiang Chun rolled her eyes at Yu Bing. I'm serious. 
No matter how you being thought about it, she felt that earning money was the best thing to do. After all, money wouldn't betray people. On the other side, Yu Yin felt that she was really unlucky today. First, she met Chui Jin and was mocked. Then, she went to town to collect a package, but realized that her adoptive parents had only sent five yuan and half of the previous amount of food. Yu Yin glared at the letter from her adoptive parents on the table and slashed it a few times with a fruit knife. Only then did the frustration in her heart dissipate. After calming down, she opened the torn envelope and started reading it impatiently. The letter was written by Yu Hai. He only told her about some family matters and how her adoptive mother had been sick for more than a week after returning home. Then, he told Yu Yin not to worry. Then, he explained that they have the money and food in hopes that she would integrate into the countryside like the other intellectuals, instead of bringing the spoiled behaviors of a city dweller to the village and creating opportunities to slack off through bribery. Yu Yin gritted her teeth and thought, who's worried about that woman falling sick? It's best if she dies from illness. Throughout the letter, there was no mention of letting her return to the city, but Yu Yin knew that her adoptive parents had done this on purpose. They hoped that she could admit her mistake and take the initiative to bring up the matter of returning. However, her relationship with her biological parents had yet to stabilize. If she returned to the city, it would be difficult to contact them again. This matter became an endless loop. The most important thing for her now was to maintain a stable relationship with her biological parents. However, the bus fare, gifts, and money to visit her biological parents would were all halved because her adoptive parents wanted to force her to return to the city. They distributed the money and only sent it once a month now. She could no longer receive 50 yuan like before and write a letter to ask for more after three months. After all, they wouldn't let her starve after she ran out of money. It had to be said that the Yu couple had really forced Yu Yin into a corner this time. Thinking of the five yuan in her pocket, Yu Yin felt anxious. After all, this amount of money wasn't even enough for her bus ticket. She calculated her savings and realized that she only had 7.83 yuan left. Seeing that her trip home was impossible now, Yu Yin was very indignant. Staring at the words your adoptive mother is sick in the letter, Yu Yin finally chose to compromise. Li Xian's illness was caused by long-term exhaustion, so she could only recuperate slowly. On hot days, others would sweat from the heat while wearing singlets, but even when she wore long sleeves, she would feel that the temperature was just right. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 266 Making a Quilt Li Xian was vulnerable to coldness, especially when she sat in the office and didn't move often. If her blood flow wasn't smooth, she would feel even colder. Yu Yin had known about this, but she had never thought of doing anything about it. It was only when she was forced into a corner this time that she thought of what to do to curry favor. After thinking about it, Yu Yin planned to make a thin blanket for Li Xian. Because it was only to cover the legs, there was no need to make it too big. In order to finish it earlier, Yu Yin specifically took half a day off the next day and went to the supply company in town to buy four pieces of fabric that were all one meter long and wide. She also bought half a caddy of cotton. At this time, almost all girls knew how to sew clothes, blankets, and other things by themselves, while Yu Yin only knew how to use a sewing machine. Yu Yin was playful and didn't like to do chores. She learned how to step on a sewing machine because her family was one of the few families who could afford a sewing machine. In order to show off, she specifically learned how to use it from Li Xian. There were only two sewing machines in Yi Mountain Village. Yu Yin gave five eggs to the owner of the sewing machine in exchange for the right to use the sewing machine for the night. The inner lining of the blanket was made of white cotton. After the cotton was stuffed in, it was sutured. Finally, nine squares of the same size were rolled out on the flat blanket. This was to prevent the cotton in the inner lining from moving around. The quilt was very simplistic. In order to save money, white cotton was used inside as well. However, in order to make it look prettier and to show her good intentions, Yu Yin reluctantly spent an extra yuan to buy a plain-colored floral cotton quilt to make the cover. She only had 12.83 yuan left in her pocket because she spent another 3.5 yuan on this thin quilt. Since Yan Yin had caught a cold yesterday, he spent the entire day in the dormitory recuperating and didn't accompany Yu Yin to town to collect the packages. However, Yu Yin specifically made him a bowl of ginger soup before setting off. Initially, Yan Yin was thinking happily that Yu Yin would definitely bring him some food when she returned. However, even before he fell asleep at night, he didn't see her. He wanted to look for her during the day, but he had a low fever today and slept for another day. After dinner, Yan Yin looked around the dormitory building again, but he didn't see Yu Yin, so he gave up. Thinking about how Yu Yin didn't visit him today, he was a little angry. Yu Yin's unpredictability made Yan Yin a little frustrated. 
Because Yu Yin wasn't in the dormitory, Yan Yin could only use the stupidest method, which was to guard the dormitory building. He had to figure out what Yu Yin had been busy with these two days. When Yu Yin returned to the dormitory building, it was already nine in the evening. When Yan Yin saw Yu Yin return with a blanket in her hand, he immediately went forward to greet her. Because of the money shortage, Yu Yin had placed all her attention on thinking of a way to get money from her adoptive parents. Now that she saw Yan Yin, she finally remembered that her boyfriend had been sick these past two days. She had completely forgotten about it. She asked with some embarrassment, Are you feeling better? Yan Yin coughed and shook his head weakly. I'm fine. I was just a little worried when I didn't see you today. I heard that you took leave this afternoon. Did something happen? Yan Yin wasn't pretending. His body was indeed a little weak from the fever these two days. When Yu Yin saw Yan Yin's pale face, she felt even more guilty, so she explained, My mother is in ill health, so I thought of making a small blanket for her to cover her legs when she goes to work. When Yan Yin heard Yu Yan's explanation, he revealed a gentle smile. It's good that you're fine. I was worried that you wouldn't tell me about your troubles because I'm sick. When Yu Yin heard this, she felt very touched and said with a smile, Don't worry, I'll definitely tell you if there's any trouble. Yan Yin swayed deliberately, as if he couldn't stand steadily. Yu Yin hurriedly held his arm and asked anxiously, Why does it seem like your condition has worsened? Yan Yin held his forehead as he said in a low voice, I had another low fever today. That's probably the reason. Yu Yin thought about how the food in the dormitory was mostly vegetarian. If Yan Yin didn't get enough nutrition while he was recuperating, his immunity would be even worse. Thinking of the money in her pocket, she finally said, I'll make some chicken soup for you tomorrow. Yan Yin refused repeatedly. Don't waste money. Your parents sent you living expenses, so you should try to eat more nutritious food. I'm tough, so I'll recover in two days at most. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 267 Misunderstanding When Yu Yin saw that Yan Yin was thinking for her sake, she was a little touched. Then, she thought of how her adoptive parents had reduced her allowance without regard for her quality of life, and her mood instantly plummeted. Yan Yin wanted to retreat in order to advance. After all, if word got out that he had molested Yu Yin, his reputation would be tarnished. However, if Yu Yin insisted, it would be disrespectful for him to refuse. Unexpectedly, Yu Yin remained silent. Yan Yin could only continue asking, Yu Yin, what's wrong? You don't seem to be in a good mood. Yu Yin thought about how she had no one to confide in, and Yan Yin was her boyfriend, so in a sense, he was family. Therefore, she told him what was troubling her. However, she naturally wouldn't tell him the truth. Omitting the fact that her parents had asked her to go back because she had lied and they wanted to discipline her, she only said the second half of the matter. In order to force me to return to the city, my parents have my allowance and monthly packages. This wasn't good news for Yu Yin, but it was even more shocking for Yan Yin. He only had 3.88 yuan left in his pocket after paying the medical fees for Yu Yin last time, subtracting the money he spent on dates with Yu Yin recently and his recent daily expenses. Even if he scrimped and saved, he could only last until next month. Originally, Yan Yin thought that Yu Yin was quite lavish since she sent food to those female intellectuals all day long. He was her boyfriend, so if he coaxed her, he would definitely enjoy even more benefits. Therefore, after knowing that Yu Yin wasn't that well off, Yan Yin was anxious now. Although he didn't know why Yu Yin was unwilling to return to the city, at this moment, even if Yu Yin was willing to go back, he couldn't let Yu Yin go back. It had not even been a month since two of them had confirmed their relationship. Yu Yin would definitely be arranged to go on a blind date by her parents and marry someone else when she returned. How could he have anything to do with her after that? When Yu Yin saw Yan Yin's anxious expression, she thought that Yan Yin was worried about her, so her heart softened and she told him her plan. After Yan Yin found out why Yu Yin had disappeared today, his previous dissatisfaction with her disappeared. After all, letting Li Xian transfer more money over was the most important thing. Yan Yin revealed a relaxed smile. How can there be overnight feuds between mother and daughter? If you have your own thoughts, they should respect you. Just write a letter back and try to compromise. Yan Yin wasn't sure if Yu Yin would be able to get money with this move, but he knew very well that his relationship with Yu Yin had to improve. After Yu Yin became so smitten with him that she couldn't bear to leave him, if Yu Yin's parents mentioned returning to the city again, he could persuade Yu Yin and use this opportunity to give the Yu couple a favorable impression of him. Thinking of this, Yan Yin decided that it was time to write a letter to his mother. He had to tell her the latest news so that Yu Bing's family wouldn't change their minds and have designs on him. Now, he was out of Yu Bing's league. When Xiao Xing went out in the morning and passed by Yu Bing's house, he saw a man in a black shirt chopping firewood in the courtyard. Xiao Xing stopped in his tracks. 
After hesitating for a moment, he walked in. When Little Tiger saw him, it trot forward and started wagging its tail nonstop. When Chui Jean saw Little Tiger's reaction, he knew that the man probably came often and he looked up. Although the other party was expressionless, Chui Jean felt hostility, so Chui Jin's first guess was that the man in front of him was also Jiang Chun's admirer. The two men tacitly kept silent and only sized each other up. After Yu Bing and Jiang Chun tidied up and pushed open the door, they saw two men staring at each other in the courtyard. The atmosphere was very strange. Yu Bing scratched her head and decided to break the ice. Xiaosheng, why are you here so early in the morning? When Xiaosheng heard this, he felt a little dejected. He felt that Yu Bing had isolated him from that man. Moreover, he was outside while the other party was inside. Xiaosheng didn't answer. Instead, he asked, who is he? Ever since Jiang Chun confirmed her relationship with Chui Jin and had been dating him for slightly more than half a day, she seemed to have suddenly matured. She immediately understood what the tense atmosphere was about. The smile on her face deepened as she looked at Xiao Sheng and said, This is my boyfriend, Chui Jin. Jiang Chun walked up to Chui Jin and introduced Xiao Sheng. When she saw Chui Jin looking at her with a slightly jealous gaze, she could only secretly glance in Yu Bing's direction. Chui Jin immediately understood Jiang Chun's hint. The tension from just now dissipated in an instant. The two men looked at each other with a smile and shook hands in a friendly manner. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 268 Brand Image Shop Yu Bing didn't notice that Xiaoxing's mood had changed from tense to relieved. Her mind was on how to increase the food factory's orders. Yu Bing had new ideas recently. After returning to the factory yesterday and keeping an eye on the current production volume, she became even more determined to carry out her plans. When she saw Xiao Xing, she wanted to mention it to him and ask for his opinion. After all, Xiao Xing couldn't take the salary of a sales consultant without doing anything. Xiao Xing, there's something I want to discuss with you. Come with me to the factory first. Xiao Xing replied, All right, I have something to tell you too. Because Chui Jin wasn't an employee of the factory, it wasn't convenient for him to stay in the factory for a long time. He could only help Jiang Chun chop firewood and carry water. Then, he watched Jiang Chun and the others leave. Yu Bing told Xiaoxing her plan. I want to open a brand image shop in each of the ten cities in the province. Only our food factory's products will be displayed inside. Xiaoxing quickly searched for memories of the sort of shop that Yu Bing had mentioned in his mind. After a fruitless search, he could only ask humbly, what is a brand image shop? This was a marketing method in the future. In this era, it seemed a little too advanced, so Yu Bing decided to explain it to Xiao Sheng. It's a method to advertise our factory's brand and let more people know about our food factory. When Xiao Sheng thought of the current economic system, he asked, but the shops outside are all state-owned. We can't open a shop in the name of the village's food factory. Yu Bing smiled. Think outside of the box. Our shop won't deliver a good. We'll only accept orders from offices. Xiao Sheng quickly understood. Isn't this just a combination of a shop and an office? It's equivalent to changing from retail to only accepting wholesale orders, but it will have an additional product display function. Yu Bing snapped her fingers. She knew that once she told Xiao Sheng, he would definitely understand her thoughts quickly. She looked at Xiao Sheng with sparkling eyes as she said, Yes, that's right. The office and the commerce bureau will still have the signboard of the food factory, but we'll add the function of displaying orders and giving orders to the factory. We won't sell goods to the public directly, so this isn't against the law. Xiaoxing looked at Yu Bing in admiration as he said, I wanted to tell you how I plan to expand my business scope. I plan to add a channel to City T. I was thinking of asking you to approve the factory's request to accept orders from there, but with your current speed of development, I won't have to worry at all. But there's another problem. If the orders are so spread out, have you thought about how to deliver them all? Yu Bing stared at Xiaoxing with a smile, but didn't speak. Xiaoxing immediately understood and said with a chuckle, You seem to have thought about it long ago. Do you plan to use my transport team? Yu Bing widened her eyes and nodded vigorously. She had no choice. The factory's tractors had been obtained by Mr. Bai with great difficulty. It hadn't been that long after, but she already needed a few more tractors. Mr. Bai probably wouldn't even let her enter the office next time. Yu Bing's sparkling eyes made Xiaoxing's heart race. He couldn't help but blame Yu Bing for being so charming. Xiaoxing looked away and pretended to be calm as he said, No problem. I'll sell them to you at the market price. Yu Bing panicked when she heard that it would be at the market price. How much would it cost to make a trip at the market price? Don't you know how poor our factory is? We have a huge debt. Xiaoxing turned his gaze back to Yu Bing and said with a smile, My buddies have to earn money too. 
Although our prices are based on the market price, you can compare the quality of the service and see if it's safer and faster than other convoys. Xiaosheng's convoy was made up of people left behind by Brother Chang and some people recruited by Zhang Chao. They were idle people he knew and trusted. The convoy was considered a formal sideline business derived from the black market. The convoy was in Zhou Kun's name. Zhou Kun and his sister were very loyal to Xiaoxing and were from the county city, so they were perfect for the job. The government was already very strict with for-profit companies, so convoys were even more strictly regulated. The people from the district administrative office pitied Zhou Kun for not having a job and having to support his sister. The siblings relied on each other at such a young age, so sometimes, when they saw Zhou Kun appear in the black market in private, they would turn a blind eye. After all, people had to survive. The clerk couldn't bear to see Zhou Kun and his sister camping on the street all day long while trying to organize a convoy, so after Zhou Kun filled in the various forms, he relented. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 269 Recruiting Operators There were very few convoys like Xiaosheng's. Most of them were state-owned transport convoys. Once things involved a state-owned company, the efficiency was unpredictable. They would be lucky if they met a responsible driver who delivered the goods on time, but if they met a slacker, it was very likely that the delivery would be delayed by a day or two. Therefore, this was also the reason Yu Bing wanted to look for Xiaoxing's convoy. Moreover, Xiaoxing had a very strong backer now, so it was relatively safe. All right, then if anything happens to the goods during the transportation, you guys will be responsible. Xiaoxing nodded and agreed readily. We've signed an agreement in advance, so we're a legitimate convoy. Don't worry. After confirming it, Yu Bing began to write the application report. When writing this report, she had to be very particular about details. For example, if it was just an ordinary office, the report would be approved by the Commerce Bureau very easily. However, Yu Bing's shop wouldn't just be an office. Hence, she emphasized that the office would release samples and offer tours of the factory. She didn't mention anything else. As long as the report for the samples was approved, as long as they didn't sell goods, it was up to the food factory to decide how much samples to display. In any case, the, the central authorities' reach didn't extend to this area. After she took the report to the city and successfully filed it, the rest would be easy to handle. Wu Jin rarely ever objected to Yu Bing's decision. After all, he was as radical as Yu Bing. When the county's people saw the request to display the products, they hesitated for a moment. Yu Bing repeatedly promised that it was only an office of the factory and that they wouldn't sell goods. Only then did they give the official stamp of approval. After the procedures were completed, they split into two groups. Yu Bing and Xiaoxing were in charge of traveling to five cities. Yu Bing gave Feng Kai a task. Without going through the usual interview process, he had to directly recruit a salesperson to accompany him to various cities to set up an office. In the future, he would run the sales business with that salesperson. As soon as the news was released, almost all the male intellectuals signed up. Therefore, during the two days before they set off, many people surrounded Feng Kai and flattered him all day long. Some people who usually only nodded at him as a greeting took the initiative to call out to him in greeting from afar. Some people even fought over the chance to wash clothes and dishes for him. However, Feng Kai remained calm and rational. He was still the same as before and didn't let the attention get to his head. After dinner, Feng Kai was writing the plans for the cities he was in charge of at the table. When Lu Jian saw that Feng Kai was in the dormitory, he knocked twice. When Feng Kai looked up and saw him, Lu Jian said with a smile, Brother Kai, I saw that you kept coughing today. This is pear cream candy that my family sent over previously. It's very effective at stopping coughing and moistening the lungs. As Lu Jian spoke, he walked into the room and placed the pear cream candy on the table. Feng Kai pushed the candy back and rejected with a smile. Take it back. The candidate for the salesperson has already been decided. Lu Jian continued smiling as he joked, It's just a few pieces of candy. I won't take them away just because I didn't get chosen. I see that you're coughing quite intensely. Fong had just opened his mouth to speak when he started coughing again and coughed for more than 10 seconds before stopping. He didn't refuse anymore. After he unwrapped the candy and put a piece in his mouth, the refreshing sweetness of the pear cream candy instantly traveled from his throat to his lungs. Feng Kai stood up with the candy in his mouth and thanked Lu Jian. I feel much better. Thank you for the candy. Lu Jian replied, You're welcome. I'm glad that it worked. I'll go back now. Tell me after you're done eating. I still have more. Feng Kai hurriedly stopped him. Lu Jian, I remember that your family is in City B, right? Coincidentally, one of the places I'm in charge of this time is in City B. Do you have time to tell me the situation over there? Lu Jian smiled brightly and said, I have time. 
You asked the right person. I've loved to run around since I was young. There's no path in B-City that I'm not familiar with. When Fong Kai heard this, he hurriedly pulled Lu Jian to a chair and prepared to take notes. Yan Yin and Fong Kai were in the same dormitory. Yan Yin was extremely jealous when he saw Fong Kai being praised by the intellectuals in the dormitory these two days. When he saw that Lu Jian was still so eager to curry favor with Fong Kai even though he knew that Fong Kai had already chosen another candidate, he felt that Lu Jian was a fool for continuing to give him candy and guidance. Yan Yin didn't want to see Fong Kai get the information about City B so smoothly, so he had an idea and said, Lu Jian, are you stupid? He already has a candidate. Also, Fong Kai, aren't you being too unscrupulous? You didn't choose Lu Jian, but you're still trying to get him to tell you information. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much. 270 Business Trip Fong Kai frowned at Yan Yin. Just as he was about to speak, Lu Jian's gentle yet sonorous voice sounded in his ear. Yan Yin, I do want the position of salesperson. I also admit that I gave Brother Kai pear paste candies to please Brother Kai, but even if it weren't for this, I would have given it to Brother Kai if he needed it. There are only a few dozen male intellectuals in our dormitory. Everyone came from the city to build the countryside, and none of us have relatives or friends here. Close friends are better than distant relatives, so everyone should help each other. I don't think we have to involve personal interests in everything. Moreover, when it comes to introducing City B, Brother Kai is asking directly, so I should answer if I can. This is the same as asking for directions on the street. There's no need to be so roundabout. Lu Jian could tell at a glance that Yan Yin was stirring up trouble and retorted bluntly. Fong Kai looked at Lu Jian meaningfully. Then, he patted Lu Jian's shoulder and said indifferently, ignore him. He likes to cause trouble. Only then did Lu Jian turn around and continue to tell Fong Kai about the situation in City B. Yan Yin was so angry that he clenched his fists tightly. He felt that Lu Jian was ungrateful. He spoke up for Lu Jian, but Lu Jian turned the blame on him. Such a person should stay in the field for the rest of his life. After thinking about it, he comforted himself that it wasn't worth being angry over these people. After all, he would be returning to the city with Yu Yin soon. Why should he care about these people? The next morning, Fong Kai wrote the name of the young man who had successfully applied for the position of salesperson. Congratulations, Lu Jian. Lu Jian, don't forget your buddies in the future. The few people who were good friends with Lu Jian smiled and patted his shoulder. When Lu Jian saw his name, he was stunned. Last night, after Fong Kai said that the person had been chosen, he completely forgotten about this matter. Fong Kai smiled as he walked towards Lu Jian. We'll set off after lunch. Is everything settled? Only then did Lu Jian come back to his senses and finally believed that the announcement he saw was true. No problem, no problem. I'll go pack my things immediately. Speaking of which, Lu Jian arrived here a year later than Fong Kai. Fong Kai understood Lu Jian's feelings at this moment. After all, he had been there before. There's no hurry. Come with me to the factory to settle the employment procedures first before going to the village committee to get a business trip certificate. With that, he brought Lu Jian out of the dormitory building. Everyone looked at Lu Jian curiously. They didn't see him helping Fong Kai that much, so why was he chosen? The key was that Lu Jian's family was an ordinary working class family. No one could think of any benefits Lu Jian's family could bring to the factory, like Fong Kai's family could. In fact, Fong Kai had told everyone who came to express goodwill to him from the beginning that he already had a candidate in mind. He had also seen people who had the same reaction as Yan Yin, but most of them had the same reaction as Lu Jian. However, the best most people could do was to not take back the candy they had given him. Lu Jian was different. Even if there were interests at stake, he would help if he could without thinking about the gains. Fong Kai liked such sincere people. Fong Kai didn't want troublemakers on the team he led. Moreover, Lu Jian was from B-City, so it was indeed a bonus. A salesperson was supposed to maintain customer relationships. Lu Jian had observed Fong Kai's situation and delivered the thing he needed in time, which meant that he was meticulous and efficient. He wasn't a slow-witted person. Since Yu Bing gave Fong Kai the privilege of recruitment, Fong Kai didn't want to let Yu Bing down, so he naturally had to choose the most suitable person. That was why he thought of this method to test everyone. After lunch, Wu Qing drove Yu Bing and the others to the county bus station. The first stop Yu Bing and Xiaoxing chose was Sea City. As soon as they left the station, Yu Bing bought a map. Unlike in the future, they could navigate wherever they went with a phone, they could only rely on the map to find places in this era. The bus station was usually in the center of the city, so Yu Bing and Xiaoxing went to the guest house to put down their luggage first. Yu Bing planned the itinerary in five cities according to the nearby and distant route. 
It was only 3.30 p.m. when they checked in, so the two of them decided to walk around the city center today to see if there was a suitable location for an office. Subscribe and read more novel to help us update chapter quickly. Thank you so much.